Hi and welcome to a new vlog. It's 2016 and it's the first one for this year and hopefully one of the many. Uh, I would like to give you a short update on what I've been working on and uh, what I plan on doing next. So the first thing to mention is this uh, auction score. I got these uh, 5 multimeters for a very good price. They were all marked as uh, possibly faulty, not working but in fact they were all working with just uh, some minor issues. So I have uh, three Fluke 87, uh, one Fluke 77 and uh, this uh, nice Tektronix TX1. Now these are uh, these four are true RMS multimeters and I especially like uh, the TX1 because it has this uh, very nice big display with large digits and uh, it also has the dual di display capability which can give you two measurements at the same time also a very nice feature of this meter it has a unique amps input jack and it uh, does some internal switching between the two current shunts so I mentioned uh, these uh, multimeters had some minor issues those were uh, the contact switches they were they were a bit uh, crusty and they weren't making uh, very good contact but that was an easy fix with some uh, contact cleaner one of the Fluke 87s also had a problem with the uh, zebra strip LCD connector the problem was uh, of course I wasn't getting all the segments on the LCD but that was also a quick fix with some uh, contact cleaner on the PCB tabs and also on the zebra strip itself and after reassembly everything worked uh, perfectly and uh, this uh, TX1 multimeter which uh, by the way has this very nice uh, battery cover which makes uh, battery replacement very easy uh, this one had some uh, leaked batteries but it was an, an easy fix uh, also with some contact cleaner and uh, a brush I was able to clean the contacts and it's uh, working perfectly I've also checked these uh, meters against my HP 3478A and uh, they were all in spec within calibration and they are also in a pretty good nick as you can see they have been used uh, only in uh, lab environment I don't think they have been used in the field so uh, they practically are as new I would also like to tell you a bit about my uh, dark load project this is a uh, electronically adjustable dummy load that I'm uh, building and uh, these two are the PCBs used in this project and if you've been following me on Twitter uh, or if you are subscribed to my uh, blog at vodlog.com you have seen my article regarding these uh, PCBs they have been uh, uh, manufactured and uh, offered for free by PCBcart.com please go and uh, read my article my review on these uh, PCBs and uh, I'm comparing I'm comparing them in the article with uh, some PCBs from Oshpark and uh, from smart prototyping these, uh, in my opinion, are the best PCBs I have seen so far, but their service is not exactly uh, hobby priced. So, for example, if they weren't to offer me these PCBs for free, I would not have uh, went with uh, their service just because they're a little bit more pricey. So this is the front panel. We'll go on the front of this uh, aluminum case. Right here on the left, uh, I have. Uh, a rocker switch for on off we have the two input jacks for millimeter banana plugs uh, right here we'll have a rotary encoder a tactile switch for a user input and a 1.3 inch uh, OLED screen now this front panel will connect to the actual main PCB via this uh, flexible uh, printed circuit cable I believe it's a 10 pin one with a 0.1 millimeter pitch and this is the actual main PCB that is powered by an STM32 microcontroller also has a Bluetooth module so uh, I should be able to 
connect uh, from my computer to this uh, dummy load remotely and uh, through an isolated uh, method. I don't want to give you too much details about this uh, design because it will have its own uh, video but uh, today I'm just giving you a small update. I haven't assembled this board yet because I don't have uh, all the components and I'm especially missing the STM32 microcontroller so as soon as uh, the microcontroller arrives I'm going to assemble this board it should work something like this the PCB will uh, slide in here let me give you a side view and the front panel will go like this and the flexible printed circuit will connect uh, the two boards something like this then I'll have a couple of uh, these uh, 40 millimeter fans on the back uh, practically uh, sucking air from the front and for that I'm going to have to drill some holes in the case so the fans will be sucking in air from the front of the case uh, pulling the air over these uh, heat sinks and uh, exhausting that air at the back of the case. This should give me uh, some decent power capability in this dummy load. I haven't uh, run the numbers yet but I'm expecting to get uh, at least 60 watts of power dissipation with this construction. So more details on this project uh, will follow as soon as I have uh, something uh, working I'll do a video uh, only about this project. I also have a bunch of uh, mail items I have received uh, so a Voldog in the mail segment will follow soon showing all those items so once again don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button thank you for watching this video and see you next time